Welcome back to The Ed Show. The group Nuns on the Bus is hitting the road tomorrow, kicking off another leg of their anti-poverty tour, this time in the state of Ohio. The organization has invited former Governor Romney and Congressman Paul Ryan, as well as President Obama and Vice President Biden, to discuss the issue of poverty tomorrow in Cincinnati. So far, neither presidential ticket has accepted the invitation. In the meantime, Paul Ryan isn't backing down from his budget, which would gut the nation's social safety net. Ryan has proposed cutting $133 billion from nutritional programs that would help the poor. Ryan is, has credited his Catholic faith for helping shape his proposals and says churches and charities should pick up the slack for the government. He didn't back down from that belief in an interview with a local ABC affiliate in Flint, Michigan. But the best thing to help prevent violent crime in the inner cities is to bring opportunity in the inner cities, is to help people get out of poverty in the inner cities, is to help teach people good discipline, good character. That is civil society. That's what charities and civic groups and churches do to help one another make sure that they can realize the value in one another. But the truth is many charitable organizations are stretched to their limits. A study from the nonpartisan faith-based group Bread for the World points out the flaws in Ryan's plan. Ryan's proposed cuts to the nation's food stamp program would mean every church in America would have to come up with approximately $50,000 dedicated to feeding people. Not only that, they'd have to come up with 50 grand every year for the next 10 years. Would your church or house of worship be able to come up with that kind of money so the wealthy can get their tax breaks? Joining me tonight is Sister Simone Campbell, leader of the Nuns on the Bus and executive director of Network, a national Catholic social justice lobby. Sister, good to have you with us tonight. Uh, let's do the math if we can for just a moment. Do you believe that most churches have an extra $50,000 lying around to pick up the tab that Ryan describes himself as a man of faith? Uh, how, do, how do we get through all of this? Do, do the churches have the kind of money to follow the plan that he's putting forth? Absolutely not. I mean, it's really shocking to think that uh, he believes that churches can do this. What he doesn't know is how hard people are working right now, how much they depend on the food subsidies, just even to keep food on family tables, and how churches are stretched already in food pantries, feeding programs, all kinds of places already giving so much this $50,000 for each house of worship would be an additional amount to what they've already raised. So it's do pe- impossible. Do, do people in the inner city need to be taught good discipline and good character? Oh. I, I mean, oh that's, what, that, that's, that's what Paul Ryan believes. Well, I know it. It's pretty shocking because he clearly has not been where I've been. Uh, every day in Washington, D.C., I see the, the folks, the working poor, out early on the bus to get to their jobs, the folks that are worked late cleaning and janitors in the various uh, office buildings. I see tremendous discipline, and I see an incredible desire yeah. to really make a go for their families. He just is out of touch. That's why we invited him to come to Cincinnati and meet some of our people. But apparently they're not coming. Well, well, speaking of out of touch, I understand that you told E.J. Dion that the president has gotten disconnected from the people he cares about. Explain what you're talking about there. You think the president is disconnected? Does he need to reconnect? Well, that's why we invited him to Cincinnati tomorrow. But I really think that the debate last week evidenced that he got really into his policy side when really the conversation needs to be about the people that are struggling in our society. Tomorrow we're, we're hosting one, one, young, one man from uh, Cleveland, Wilbur Hughes, who is raising six girls by himself. He's a single dad who's raising these girls. He's working hard. He's making ends meet. But it's really hard with a family and being a single parent. But he's so disciplined and so focused, and his girls are doing really well in why, school. Why did, you, why did you choose Ohio? I mean, everybody knows how critical oh. Ohio is. Why Ohio? Well, actually, it was the sisters here. We went through Ohio in the original Nuns on the Bus, but what happened here was that the sisters said, this is such partisan divide, we need to lift up the 100%. We need to go on the road and let people know what the struggle is. So I came to be supportive to my sisters. They're the ones that created this Nuns on the Bus 2, the Nuns on the Bus Ohio. You so think you're I'm having an impact? Them. Do, you think you're oh, ha- do you think you're having an impact? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. People in the United States are standing up. They are feeling energized. We can talk about the real things in our nation and we can talk to each other. It's a tremendous moment when we can talk about people in poverty, people in the middle class. We can talk about the 100 percent and not call names, not try to be fearful, not drive wedges between each other. This is for all of us. Okay. This is being we the people. Sister Simone Campbell, thank you for joining us tonight on The Ed Show and keep up the fabulous work. Coming up, a multi-millionaire CEO who's building himself the largest house in the United States of America tells his employees, if President Obama is reelected, you might not have a job. Stay with us. <laughs> 